Who's up next? Thirty low. <laughs> A little bit extra on that one. Well, that's the kick serve that we know so well on a hard court after actually getting a bit of bite off the grass court surface that time. Rafter had his hair shaved in February for charity for his own uh, children's foundation. 30-15. Michael Klim did the job, the uh, Olympic gold medalist swimmer. And they raised $30,000 for Rafter's foundation. Little white patch you see there, he was born with. They call him Skunky. Well, Dozadel wrong foots rafter here. As you can see, the grass court still a little damp and slippery. Turn around to have to work hard. 40 30. And Rafter so imposing at the net. Rosadell looked in position to hit an aggressive passing shot, but Rafter all over it. Three doubles early on. is not happy with this serve at all. Advantage. She lift up on that a little bit. Almost as though the, the severe slow pace off the return fooled him. Looked in two minds whether to slice that ball or to hit it with top spin. It didn't hit it well at all. Break point for Dossadil to go break ahead again. Deuce. And you can hear the relief around the court.
Advantage Rafter. Rafter starting to crank it up. That was his quickest serve so far. 118. He's returning well, isn't he, the Czech? Deuce. He's taking the ball so early that Rafter's not able to get in as close to the net as you'd normally like to. And you can see where he's hitting that first passing shot from. He's six or seven feet inside the baseline. see where Dozadel is starting to return serve and he takes two or three steps and by the time he follows through he's three or four feet inside the baseline. And that wasn't the body that Rafa was looking for and Dozadel made him pay. This is a very bright start. Dozadel. Exactly right. Well Rafter Rafter just that was a gimme almost. Hit it short and right back to Dozadel. Not the sort of volleys we're used to seeing from Rafter. Juice. Well, the footwork on this volley is superb. Touch even better. Second ace for Arthur. Advantage Rafa. And that serve is just about the key to Rafter's game if he can get the wide serve working well that sets up the kicker the other way John Rafter new balls please yes Rafter looks up at uh, Tony Roach there just to acknowledge that uh, that was tough Rafter leads four games to three first sets new balls room now training three four Too good. Cool as you like. 15 left. Well, how does Adele got that ball up, over, and back down again in such a short space? It's extraordinary. <laughs> 15 all. When you're returning against a guy who's got such a higher ball toss. Does it take you out of your rhythm? Will it take you time to really adjust to it? I think it would take a few games before you, you get your split step timed right. Thirty fifteen. Well, Rafter not timing that one well. I think it came off the line. Sometimes the lines are a little bit slower than the rest of the court. Not a good percentage for Rafter. <laughs> Gosto playing as if he really fancies this. 40-15. Game, Dozadel. Very comfortable from the back. 
Pogenzo. And very aggressive as well. Not allowing Rafter to get on his front foot. Which of course is where Rafter wants to be. Rafter most comfortable at the net, looking to get in as soon as possible. Fifteen love. After watched here by girlfriend Lara Felton. Thirty love. Game Rafter. That's moving there from Rafter. Rafter leads five games to four first sets. Well, Rafter went on to take that opening set 7-5. Dozzledale came back to win the second set 6-4, but then the number three seed took control, and here in the fourth set, Rafter had reached match point. Yeah. Yeah. Classic yeah. serve volley yeah. points yeah. to finish on. Rafter the win. 15-13. He sold his aeroplane, this man. He used to have an executive Cessna, I think it was. But he's had to sell it, getting on hard times. And again, the Palmer backhand doing the damage. Not a bad serve from Kafelnikov. Palmer just leaning into it. Good hustle from the Brit. Unable to pull it off. Opportunity oh, it was right in the slot where you want it. Oh. Yes, yeah, good money. Advantage, Kafenikov. Interesting, he's coming in all the time now. He wasn't at the start of the match. one cross court it's his favorite one so this has become quite an important game now oh there there was a golden chance 
Second of those. Deuce. And would you believe the seventh of those? Net for six. Advantage, Kafenikov. So the longest game of the match by far, this. Four deuces. Well, Palmer obviously had his chances there, but failed to take them. Let's move it along now. Four games later, Palmer about to serve. Fifty love. Does miss a lot of forehands like that, Kafelnikov. Really does so much work with the arm rather than with the wrist. Fifth and all. It's about this time. If there are any after effects from his match, his opening round, his five setter where he cramped, it's probably going to be. This time where it's going to start showing itself. Oh. 15 13. Well, this may be what is happening. Two running. Numbers three and four of the match. Fifteen fourteen. You can't afford to give Kafelnikov any gifts. Of getting him out of trouble there. Easy put away. Five games to three, third set. Certainly got the feeling he was tiring a little bit in that game, Palmer. That last second serve hit at 69 miles an hour. It's not exactly travelling. Fifty love. That's a rueful shake of the head. Well, Kafelikov knows that he's been given the opportunity by Palmer's frailty in that last service game, and he's going to make it hurt. Thirty-fifteen. Palmer's backhand still serving him well. Jeez. 
42-15. So a couple of set points now for Kafelnikov. Game and third set Kafelnikov. Well, that was obviously a pretty crucial moment in terms of the match as a whole. And here we go, fast-forwarding to the end of the match because Kafelnikov ran away with the fourth set. And that loose shot from Arvind Palmer meant the number seven seed, the Australian and French Open champion days gone by, was safely through to the next round. And uh, if his attitude's right, he could yet be a contender here on the grass at Wimbledon. As for Palmer, his Wimbledon was over for another year. Can I just ask you about comments made this morning by David Lloyd? He's on record as saying that you have a wonderful talent, Arvind, but he just feels that you should perhaps get yourself a new coach to become fitter and stronger to increase that element of your game. How would you respond to his comments? Well, uh, yeah, he's a, he's a very outspoken person and he's uh, always said that. Um, but, uh, you know, I proved to him again, I, I got through a best of five set match and, you know, I, I trust my team around me, my coach, my trainer, and, and I'm, I'm pleased with the way things are going. Well, I think David Lloyd made that comment off the back of the match a couple of days ago when it was mm. blisteringly hot mm. and uh, Arvin Palmer had a slight t uh, touch of cramp. It, but fitness is key, obviously, especially in conditions like this. Well, it is. I, I think the, the, the tough thing, I mean, there's so many things go into cramping. I mean, Pat Rafter has cramped before. Um, you know, I've, I've known, I've, I've actually cramped because of nerves in a three-set match, you know, and uh, so a lot of things goes in, a lot of nervous energy, but the, the conditions, because the weather, you've got to remember, only about 10 days ago in Queens, or, le you know, maybe less than 10 days ago, and the, the, on the final day on Sunday, it was something like, you know, 10 degrees, yeah. and all of a sudden we've gone to 32 degrees, you know, a week later. Players can't adjust, there's, you know, virtually 20 degrees change. I mean, that's very, very tough to do, and he's played five sets. Uh, look, look if, there was, if the weather was more consistent, or if he was training in south, you know, south of Spain or somewhere like that, and he came up to play Wimbledon, uh, he'd be no problems. But, you know, it is tough to, to deal with that, and, and five set matches, well, yeah. you know, there's a lot of elements involved in that. Let's, let's just blame the weather. And Kofelnikov, is he one of the great underachievers here? In, in my opinion, yes. You know, I, I, and I said this the other day, is that every year, I, I want to pick Kafelnikov as a player to go through, and every year I have sort of picked him as, as a, you know, watch out for Kafelnikov, he's going to go through, and every year he disappoints me, you know. Um, his second serve tends to let him down, uh, he, serves, he tends to serve a lot of double faults against top players. You know, I think he's a great player, there's not a shot he can't do, he's tough, he's, you know, he's match hardened, he plays a lot of tennis. You know, and every year he lets me down, this year I haven't picked him, so he probably go through, <laughs> but it's just my luck. But, you know, I think he is an underachiever here and, you know, hopefully one, one year he will come through. OK, well, while Palmer was doing battle on court two, on centre court, uh, Jamie Delgado was trying to do what John McEnroe said last night on this programme was uh, the impossible, and that was to beat Andre Agassi. The actual final score was 6-2, 6-4, 6-3. Uh, Delgado played well in the longer rallies, but as Mac predicted last night, didn't really have a big enough shot to worry, worry Agassi. Uh, I don't know how much of this game you saw, Pat, but Agassi was ruthlessly efficient I think it's fair to say well what Andre is is uh, or what Jamie is I suppose is uh, a like Andre Agassi style player but just doesn't have the guns and I think John you know correct in saying that you know Andre is just an incredibly tough player I mean and what was Jamie gonna to put up against Andre to beat him I mean, he had to serve big he had to really play the match of his life and and uh, you know I think it was just a bit too much for him and also I intimidating as well. I mean, in never underestimate that. Look, Jamie delgado has got one of the, look, a great backhand. Uh, you know, to go out there on centre court uh, and to use that backhand and completely dominate a match with with, he, with, with his best shot against Andre. I mean, you know, Andre's a great player. I mean, we know that. We know how tough he is. And and he, I reckon, after the French Open. He, he's he's bitterly disappointed, you know. He, he mm. really sort of was really grumpy in the press conference, and uh, you know I think he was looking at. He really believed that he could win the Grand Slam, and um, and you know I think some of us did believe it as well. I don't think it's an impossibility these days with all the court surfaces evening up mm. as, in, as far as pace and the balls. You know it's not impossible, and I think he he really wants to come out and win Wimbledon, and you know uh, I'm not going to bet against him.
OK, well, of course, Capriati, the, the slam is still on for her. Anyway, let's hear from Agassi. Uh, he was talking to Hazel Irvin. Tell me where you're at in terms of the way you're playing in this championship. Are you happy with your progress so far? Uh, how can you not be? You know, I mean, I've mm -hmm. gotten through two now in uh, uh, good form, and uh, every match is a new day, and you, you're trying to you know, ask yourself, where can I improve, where can I play better? But you can't play better than you have to in some cases, so right now everything's in order. Uh, so perhaps, as expected, the British challenge is now down to just two. But the thing at Wimbledon today was that wherever you looked, the whole place was just awash with French. The French connection at Wimbledon continued with four more Frenchmen in action, all being for places in the third round. Ninth seed Sebastian Grosjean, who reached the semi-finals at the Australian and French Open this year, had little problem in dispatching Reina Schuttler in straight sets. That sets up a third round meeting with his compatriot Nicolas Escudet, who apparently does everything left-handed, except play tennis. It certainly doesn't seem to affect his game. The former Wimbledon junior champion Leander Pays falling to him in straight sets. The third musketeer to claim his victim was Fabrice Santoro, through to the third round for the first time at Wimbledon after defeating Max Murney in straight sets. And bringing up the rear, D'Artagnan in the shape of Cedric Pierlin, Playing his 11th consecutive Wimbledon, the former finalist will have to wait overnight to finish his match against Andrei Stolyarov. After saving two match points, Bad Light stopped play. They'll restart at 5 all in the fifth set. And they were still playing on court 18, just over there by our studio, literally 20 minutes or so ago. Right, well, let's move on from the French to the Australians, who, of course, would have us all believe that they are the role models for all sport, but maybe not in, not in, not in tennis, because there's only two Aussies left in this championship, you know. One happens to be Rafter and the other Hewitt. Uh, let's start, though, with Patrick Rafter, who was up against Slava Dosadel of the Czech Republic, and he didn't get off to the best of starts. As we joined Simon Reid and Peter Fleming, last year's beaten finalist is 3-2 down. Love 15. And this is the shot that Rafter has developed over the last few years, or, or rather he didn't really have it in the beginning of his career, and once he developed that topspin backhand pass, he became a great player. Fifteen thirty. It's disappointing for him, and uh, he's looking to put a bit of pressure back on Dossendal. See by the uh, shirt fluttering around there, it's much breezier than it has been, and uh, a good deal cooler. I guess if you're trying to warm up and you've got a bit of an elbow problem, it's not the ideal day. Not cold, but nowhere near as warm as it has been.
slipped there, Dustin. I don't think it made any difference. Yes, well, Rafter floated that return high, and it looked as though it was going to land on the line, and it's a very difficult shot. You can see Dossadell struggling to reach it, and even if he, well, he did reach it, but very diff difficult to get any power. So break point for the Aussie. Taking Raft rather Raft is getting close to the net and coming up looking very good. Deuce. Well, I'm sure the sort of hands that Dozadel shows here had to have surprised Rafter. He doesn't lose many rallies of this sort. Just an instinctive reaction. Advantage Rafter. First double for Dossadol. Second break point for Rafter. And a rather meek one at that. broke again in the 12th game of that set and that meant he took it seven games to five so here we are level pegging again four apiece in the second <laughs> 15 love 